Our interest is with us now gender equity according to the European Institute of Gender Equality is the provision of fairness and justice in the distribution of benefits and responsibilities between women and men. The concept recognizes that women and men have different needs and power and that these differences should be identified and addressed in a manner that rectifies the imbalances between the sexes. Now, this may include equal treatment or um, treatment that is different but considered equivalent in terms of rights, benefits, obligations, and opportunities. Now, though often used interchangeably, equality and equity are two very distinct concepts. The term gender equity has sometimes been used in a way that uh, perpetuates stereotypes about women's role in society, suggesting that women should be treated fairly in accordance with the roles that they carry out. Now, these understanding risk perpetuating unequal gender relations and sort of define gender stereotypes that are detrimental to women. Therefore, the term should be used with caution to ensure it is not masking a reluctance to speak more openly about discrimination and inequality. So what are your thoughts um, on gender equity and how can we begin to create an enabling environment for Nigerian women in leadership and business. Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the rate one eight zero three eight four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. So I'll bring in Maria in a second or two. But I just want to hear your quick thoughts on how you think we can begin to really, really embrace equity, you know, amongst gender. Mm. Okay. So first, I would like to say. I love the fact that you already mentioned that there's a very big difference between equality and equity, right? And I'm going to use a quick illustration as an example. So you're trying to get someone to get mangoes from the top of a tree. And you give the person, you give everybody ladders. And you give them the same type of ladders. Now that's equality, right? Now equity is, okay, you're saying, oh, well, it's way taller than Chinelo is. So we'll definitely not need, her ladder doesn't have to be as tall as Chinelo's ladder. Now that's equity. Mm -hmm. So it's just providing for each person resources according to their unique capabilities. So that's why we've always had that problem of stereotypes and people saying, oh, you people are shouting equality, equality, equality. I mean, I, I'm glad that now we've realized that it's not equality, it's actually equity. And yeah, for that sake, I'm embracing equity. Okay, oh, keep on embracing. <laughs> How about you, Glory? Um, I think um, we, we have to get to that point where everyone has to accept the fact that women are actually also innovative and we are also um, resilient and we, we, we can actually contribute a lot to society's growth. I'll give an example. My organization, the organization I work with, is partly owned by a woman. It's been a bittersweet experience per se. So some of the contracts we've gotten comes from a side of curiosity. So people are curious. They want to know can an organization, deliver? can she deliver? So most times when we are invited for a pitch, it's not because, oh, we've seen an amazing organization. They're just, OK, a woman-owned organization. So let's see what they have to say. Or maybe just a pretty face, you know. So when we actually go there and we show what we got and we actually deliver, they now take it back and be like, OK, so we can now do business. So I feel like we have to get to that point where we are very we become very accepting to the fact that women are actually intelligent enough to handle specific roles and also the fact that they should receive what they duly deserve irrespective of if irrespective so there are people like um the what's in the news i just took where you perform the same tax you do everything the same but still you're paid lesser than your meal count simply because you're even woman. delivering better you're even delivering better <laughs> so i think or is it that the women walk up is different from the male <laughs> <laughs> so we just have to be generally absolutely. um accepting absolutely no let me hear your thoughts quickly no are you there oh did we lose Noma? oh no i think you're muted all right, so while you're gathering your thoughts, let me bring in Maria Chike Benjamin. She's an accomplished realtor 
a reality star, former air hostess and model known for her passion for helping others and uh, her ability rather to connect with people from all walks of life. Maria is a graduate of media and performance from the University of Salford, where she graduated with a second class opera division. She is also a dedicated philanthropist and a community leader known for her volunteer work and commitment to giving back to the community. Might I add, she's a very pretty woman with a very, very intelligent brain. <laughs> Hi, Maria. Thank you so much for joining us. You look amazing, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure being on Yeah. Here. I mean, so, I mean, this conversation, first of all, um, today is International Women's Day. And yeah. it was important that we, first of all, featured someone that um, we know that over the years you have grown, you know, in terms of watching and seeing how far you're transitioning from one role to another and you know at every stage it seems that everything that you've been doing you know there's just been some level of success that's been recorded Thank along you. the line so it's always good to have women like that you know to speak with so I mean as if they say equity the concept of equity what would that mean to you as Maria you know um, given that I think it was Patrick was mentioning pretty face you are a very pretty face oh, sure. <laughs> you know you. So, so but what would equity mean to you if we're talk talking about embracing equity especially in the place where okay. uh, Nigeria let's put Nigeria's case study highly patriarchal a lot of things you know it seems like you know you have to knock hundred times you know for a door that a man might just knock just once and all of that so what would equity mean to you um, so it's Chinelu, right? Yeah. Yeah. She literally more or less took the words out of my mouth when she was when you did ask the question first. Um, so yes, equity and equality, total different things. Again, it's the fact that yes, women are 100% capable of achieving even more than men can do. I solely believe that because we can do everything men can do, but men can't actually do everything we can do. Mm -hmm. um, but not just that, the fact that she mentioned equity. Equity to me is the fact that you might just slightly need a little bit of help, like she gave the illustration with the lathers or yes. you know climbing up. Um, doesn't mean I'm not capable of doing that job. I just need a little bit more support because of maybe my physique as a woman. Or, you know, men are masculine and we're feminine. So in a way, they look at us like, oh, you can't actually do this job. Like, you're tiny, you're petite, <laughs> you're a woman, you're probably not that intelligent, or you got here through a means of X, Y, Z. So a lot of that, it would be nice to eradicate, not just in Nigeria. I think it's everywhere in the world. I do remember, you know, working in the UK and had the same salary as a, did not have the same salary as a man that were in the same position and I was actually delivering more because I wanted more like I wanted to grow with the company I needed promotion and stuff like that so I was like more or less busting my you know and it just I wasn't just getting anywhere because I'm a woman at the end of the day so we do need to like um, for me if you ask me how can we get rid of stuff like that it'd be from home it's cultural it's family oriented it would be your upbringing, first of all. You see in certain homes where the the elder the daughter, yeah, would be serving the younger brother just because, oh, he's the head of the house, like that's the first son of the house, and oh, you're the first daughter, or they'd push the men to go to school more than the females, or stuff like that. So all of that, we need to put a stop to it, and like. So let me come to your career because you've transitioned. I mean, I was. Um, glancing through your, your resume, you yeah. know, air hostess, realtor, so many businesses you've done. So if you say that you want to like look deeply into your careers over the years, the transitioning that has happened, do you think you have women that you can point to to say these are the women, you know, that helped me through those ranks? Or is this something that you truly, you know, struggled on your own just to be you know, to grow through all of those, you know, or transition through all those jobs that you had done as a businesswoman? Um, it would be a bit, a bit of both, if I'm being honest, and it would be a bit of my family as well. Um, you know, growing up, my dad would always say, you know, people don't, you ha people don't really listen to you if you're not something of your own. Um, so instead of him having to feed me all the time, he'd rather I do what I needed to do by myself, but observe and watch behind and advise or, um, so in a sense, 
of inspirational women that I would look up to or I'd want to be like. There are a few, obviously a lot of black women. Opera, for instance. I saw on TV you guys had, um, when I was backstage watching, Ngozi um, Iwala. Yeah. Perfect, amazing example of someone that you know a lot of people should look up to. Um, and the struggles in life, if we're being real and honest, is both genders most times, but it's a little bit more harder on women than it is on men. Mm. So yes, I did experience a lot of, for instance, um, when I worked as an air hostess for Emirates, um, you know, there are certain roles we weren't able to do. It was more or less, you know, you're being pampered as a lady, whereas the men are more, they seem confident or they seem stronger, but I wanted certain roles that I couldn't get just because, and then, oh, in other parts of the world as well, it's totally different. For, for instance, the Arab country, they, they barely regard women as, you know, anything. I mean, it's slightly changing, but when I first moved to United Arab Emirates, it was like women are more seen as, oh, homely, just get covered up, you can't really say much. Um, and it affected my job as well, like the role in my job, because most of my seniors, when I first started, or the, what do you call it, the hierarchy, like yeah. the left chain They're of command, right, yeah. um, they were all Arabs and mostly English as well. So the Arabs, you can't really say much or you can't demand certain things because they'd be like, you're a woman. Mm -hmm. You can't even ask for that. Um, mm -hmm. So it was hard. And so it's just a bit of both that you keep growing with um, and learning that you're a strong and you just have to, you, you are a strong woman and you really just have to keep. Julia, <laughs> <laughs> you know, let me come to you. <laughs> so not too much about the privilege of beauty bias, right? First of all, do you think this is actually a thing? And have, how have you experienced and how has that affected you as a woman? I'd be lying if I sat here and say it's not a thing. It is a thing. It's never affected me. Um, it's been a stereotype, if I'm being honest. Um, but that, I haven't actually gotten anywhere, if I'm being completely honest, just because, oh, you look at, I look a certain way, or maybe to other people, oh, you're so beautiful, so we'll give you this. Not in the parts of the world that I grew up in. There are so many beautiful women. Um, mostly, I feel like that happens a lot in Africa, um, Nigeria, to be precise. Other countries, if you're being more, it's everywhere in the world, but mostly, it's a thing in Nigeria, you know. Um, but other parts of the world, sometimes it's a bit of both. Like you have to be beautiful and you know your stuff as well. So when you're speaking or when you're interacting with certain, you know, level of caliber of people, um, you actually do know what you're talking about or you are fit for the job. But, but mostly just in Nigeria, it's like, okay, we'll get you here. You're beautiful. That's it. We, we just need you to be beautiful. So there is a thing as pretty privileges. I don't want to believe it's gotten me anywhere because I don't think I've used that card. Um, cause Are it, you sure about that? If it did, I should be somewhere better than where I am now. Um, but I'm not there yet. So, And I avoid stuff like that as well because I want to work for what I've done. I don't want the glory of no glory, if you know what I mean. So I want my glory to be I did this and they can recognize that I did this. So I'm you glorified. put in the work. Yeah, and I'm glorified for that. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, I'm really, I really want to know more about your venture into real estate because from what I gathered, it's a male-dominated field. So, how has that been and how were you able to transition into real estate? Um, I was in real estate for a very short period of time. It was in Dubai. Um, a lot of men are into it. You barely have women who are realtors. So it was a time when obviously COVID happened and I got made redundant with Emirates. So the next step was to look for another job and you know, immediately I really got with a good, a great company. It was actually an English company. Um, but the struggle was real in the sense that there was no respect for time. People would call you whenever, weekends, weekdays, midnight, to you know, go over certain contracts or even ask you to send them pictures or videos of, of houses. Um, but the male, the male realtors were more, 
the, okay, so a lot of Arabs would own buildings in, in Dubai and they're the landlords and stuff like that. So they wouldn't, they would look at me like, you're a woman, what are you doing in this field? So I'd be, I wouldn't be listened to as much as the male would. So what I then did was be very friendly, overly friendly with my male colleagues so they can introduce me to their landlords <laughs> and, you know, I can get a share of certain properties and then, because, you know, everything is more like, okay, this is my region, that's your region. Um, so it was hard at the beginning. I was probably not making any money because it's, you know, on commission basic basics and stuff like that um, till I got the hinge of it and the gist of it and I got a lot of landlords on my side and I'm, naturally I'm a chatty person and I'm a very bubbly person I believe. Really? So, yeah. <laughs> and, um, so are you trying to be calm with us here? Because we need the bubbly. Oh, okay. Well, we're asking serious questions. But, <laughs> no, um, we, we can have fun while we're, while okay, we're discussing that's serious yeah. things. So, you know, I did my little thing and I got a lot of love, I'm not going to lie. Um, so if that's where the pr pretty privilege comes from, maybe. Um, they did mistake me half of the times to be Arab because of the way I dressed back then. Um, so yeah, I kind of succeeded in getting more properties under my name and then I was sell selling and obviously renting as well. So then I started making money and before I decided to move back to Nigeria. Wow. Yeah. Mama, are you there now? Yes, we can. Muffled, but we're trying to hear you. Oh, you know what? No, my hold that thought. Let's quickly go on a break, right? When we come back from the break, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing gender equity for Nigerian women in leadership and business. And we still have with us Chike and uh, Maria Chike Benjamin. Now, please remember you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to rate one eight zero three eight four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, Nama, you are you there now? Yes, I'm here. Awesome, we can hear you clearly now. Go ahead. All right, so uh, Maria, I really um, love the fact that uh, you also have a real estate background, which was my first love <laughs> before so many other things. So, but I, I wanted to just piggyback off what you had said earlier, you know, talking about women um, understanding their strength and all. And um, I wanted you to touch a little bit about women also trying to prove themselves. So you found yourself in an environment that was male dominated. And um, you have a lot of women who are constantly, you know, trying to prove themselves and tr um, trying to give themselves a sense of purpose. And in the process, they're crushing themselves with so many responsibilities. You're a mom, you're, you're a career woman, you're a businesswoman, you're, you know, so many responsibilities that they have to um, hold as women, right? Um, how do women begin to balance their uh, quest to find purpose in life as well as overcome the imposter syndrome that they struggle with? Um, I think that's why today is very important, being International Women's Day, because that awareness has to more or less go out further and be, you know, educated to younger generations that just feel like a woman's just supposed to be married and be in her husband's house and have children. Um, you know, again, I can't stress enough, it does have to start from the families and home. Um, and just believe in yourself. If a man can literally do anything, and just to remove men out of it, so it's not like we're rubbing shoulders or, you know, just you as a being, just being a lady, a woman, just knowing that you can actually do all things, have that in mind, and you can always try and fail. The more you fail, the more you can, you know, know your strengths and your weaknesses and succeed further, further on in life. Um, so I think it's just personal self-accountability, -ac like knowing, okay, I'm not so good at this, so I have to learn further, or I have to push myself a little bit harder, um, or I am good at this, so this is my field, I'll teach other women. And again, today it's more about women, supporting women, 
not just breaking our weaknesses and shaming each other with our weaknesses, but learning from our weaknesses as well and making it our strength and looking at other people's strength as well, like other women's strength and like learning from them. Um, so it's not a competition because there's always a timeline for everyone to win in life. That's what I believe. So your friends might be winning today and you know, tomorrow might just be your turn. So it's just loving and supporting each other with strengths and weaknesses all around. You know, it's interesting you're talking about that waiting your turn and all of that. And I, I keep wondering, why are women so hostile towards other women? Um, I am blessed to be managing a team of, I don't even know how many women now. <laughs> you know. And for some strange reason, it has never crossed my mind to feel like, you know, somebody's trying to outshine somebody. But I see that a lot with women because, again, it's important that we are women and we must be honest with ourselves, right? We're fighting for equity, we're fighting for women and all of that. The problem that we have, it is not from men. Do you understand? The, the biggest problem or the biggest challenge I see us having is women ourselves, right? I see this person, you know, I believe in tapping into people's strength. And just forget about their weaknesses. That one no concern. Likewise. You know, mm -hmm. let's focus on what they are good at and just continue to, you know, push them with what it is that they are good at. But you see, I see, I see a lot of women struggle with that. Why is that so? You know, so and what, how can we start to better, you know, um, better encourage and better embrace ourselves as women? Because first of all, we can keep the men aside. They are really not our problem. If we want to really be honest with ourselves, women, we are our biggest problem. So how do we start to do that? What do you think we can do? Your opinion's great. I disagree. Okay. Um, I like that you disagree. Yeah, I disagree me. just because I don't want to 100% base our, what did you call it, the our envy within each other. I don't want to blame it on solely just men. But men do have their little you know, say in why women fight each other or not that, you know, that's something I don't think, I don't think I've ever, I, I, it's never been in me to be envious of any other woman. You know, you have your qualities, you have your strengths and you have your own beauty, you know. One minute you look at a beautiful woman, you walk past another room, you look somewhat, you look, you find someone way more beautiful than her and, it just, you know, the beauty just carries on. That's what I believe in. So everyone's unique in their, their own little ways. But men... On the other hand, again, I'm going to stress family orientation. It starts with, oh, but your elder sister's doing this and she's better at this. You know, it kind of just discourages you. Your parents are already, you know, leveling you up with your elder sister or your little Compa sister. Who, you know, there's comparison there. And instead of it encouraging you or making you fight better, you know, you, your zeal is dead immediately. That That's how I function when people bring me down but then immediately you have to think no I am actually Maria Chike and I can do this and you you know you you go ahead and yeah, fight for yourself right. but it starts with family and then the other hand is men because men and like men men are men are a huge problem in life I'm joking really? <laughs> no, I mean, no they're not no <laughs> men are amazing I love men um no I mean in the fact that you know there's competition with marriages with dating with siblings even you know some some brothers have their favorite female sibling or because of our Maria, ages i don't know how you want to coin this thing when women go for instance you know okay let's even take beauty because mm -hmm. i can bet you for free that your beauty will be a problem to many people around you right because you are distinctively beautiful Thank so you. it's not some you're not someone that will walk into a room unnoticed right okay so it is not the men it is the fellow woman that says, what is Maria doing differently? Which cream is she rubbing? Because they think sometimes it's cream. You know, I mean, I'm just saying to you that if we really want to bridge certain gaps that we see as lapses, right, in amongst women, amongst ourselves, we must first of all learn mm -hmm. to embrace ourselves and accept ourselves the way we are. Because when we start to benchmark our, whether we're more beautiful, benchmark it with this person or this person, we are the cause of our problems. It's not really the men. So you that's know. why I stated yeah. initially, 
you have to just, you know, like I was saying, you could walk into a room, you see someone more beautiful than you are, or X, Y, Z, it carries on. You can never find a woman who's the most beautiful ever. So everyone has their uniqueness in them. But the reason as to why certain women are envious of others is because, for instance, I could be sat with you, I'm with a husband or a partner, and you walk in and it's like, he's looking at you like, wow, who's this lady? She's absolutely <laughs> stunning. <laughs> that would affect me, you know? Like, why, why are you I looking at her? her? You know? Mm -hmm. But instead of me just appreciating your beauty to say, wow, you're actually so stunning, I want to be friends with you, I'm more concerned with the fact that whoever I'm with, or even a girlfriend, let's leave men aside. It could actually be girlfriend and girlfriend, you know, we're, we're high school friends and she wants to be friends with you because you're so much more beautiful than her best friend who's just sat next to her. But it could be, we just like something about you. But instead of me to embrace that and want to be friends with you and learn about you or... Hmm. It's interesting. I like, I like your analogy, I but I will still put it to you that it is us. <laughs> Right, because if somebody does that to me, like you rightly said, I'll, write, I'll walk up to you and tell you, actually, so we, we need to learn, first of all, to appreciate each other. You know why I'm going, where I'm going with this conversation? Because, again, sometimes we're talking about how we can build more women in business and leadership. The only way we can do that is to, first of all, set aside some of these things that stand as barriers and find a way to continue to build. So, for instance, there's a business opportunity, and I know that I cannot deliver at 100%, but I know Maria can do 110%. Why? What's stopping me from putting her name or forward. mentioning her name for, you know, you know? So that's the thing. If we really must build, right, if we must grow women, if we must begin to bridge some of these gaps that we have, and, you know, we need to then start to see it and say, you know what, for every opportunity that I get, so my sister is in a position of leadership, for instance, in our organization, and she makes it as a point of duty. That for every time she's given an op um, what's it called a task to hire, if she's hiring five people, three of those five people must be women, and okay. she will go and fish out the competent okay. ones. Do you understand? So if we are very deliberate about all of these things, we'll begin to build more women in roles of leadership, and we'll continue to grow more women businesses. Right. So if if we if we start to first of all put aside some of the things that really disturbs us, because I don't understand. I mean, there's beauty, yes, is one of the biggest problems that a lot of women have because they just feel like, you know what, I think I can be more, I need to look like this person more and all of that. And I think that's a distraction for a lot of women because now we're not seeing the real greatness people have. So, for instance, we read your CV, you know, someone that has a 2-1, she has a DC, but everybody that keeps on talking about you is just, oh, she's beautiful. And, and that's, it ends there. I mean, doesn't, doesn't that even get to you as oh, a woman? Oh, it bothers me. Yeah. No, seriously. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So, I mean, so how do we begin to correct that? So how can we be very deliberate about it so that we're not saying that it's only, you know, we need to start to be very intentional about growing those kinds of portfolios for women. That's what I'm going But with. then when you state what you've stated, then it's not really gender-based, is it? Because you will find uh, males who are likewise doing the same thing in big companies. I you could find a man who's in the role of leadership and would just out of jealousy or like just a certain personality that person has or upbringing mm -hmm. not want to put his fellow man who he knows is capable for that. Men will not do that. Mm -hmm. Men do. No, I lie. I believe they do. <laughs> you think so? You've not met them. <laughs> oh, I know them. Ah, you know them. <laughs> um, I believe so. I think it's just personality. I, I wouldn't base that on gender if you ask me. I think it's individual is an individual thing and again upbringing does matter a lot I don't know why I keep talking about family orientation but I feel like if there's so much love given to children not just your your needs or your wants but like real love as to how you should share how you're raised. yeah how you're raised how you should share your space how you should share who you are as a person and how you should actually love other people. It starts from, you know, your tender age. And once you reach or miss that gap, you just become like the rest of the people in the world. Mm. Okay. How do you think it should be? Well, <laughs> for me, for me I, I'm, I'm just going to talk about uh, gender equity in business now, for example. So it is widely believed that there's a strong correlation between gender equity and organizational success, right? But then in most cases, by the time you start to get to certain levels, 
um, like the managerial levels now, you start to see that there's a whole middle that women are suffering because you get to see fewer women at the that, above the managerial levels. It's usually men that you see sitting on the boards, men like the EDs. It's, it's rare. I'm not saying that no women, but then it's quite rare to see women on boards. And then in most cases, when you even see women there, you find out that that woman has more female enemies in the organization. Than, the, than her male counterparts. And this is, I mean, I have seen this happen in several places. When a woman rises, they are barely, maybe now, I, because of this other, okay, I'll say my generation now, because we're now beginning to realize that, okay, we're supposed to do this women supporting women things, so we're supposed to hold each other's hands and try to, you know, move up and all of that. But then, looking back, there's that hollow middle that is very, very conspicuous. And I think that's why we need to actually embrace this um the, the the theme for this year's iwd because yeah, we need to now understand that when you see another woman climbing up a ladder it's very important for you to hold on because it's easier for her to pull you yeah. than for a man to, to to pull you i don't know if you understand what i mean so yeah i think that women need to do a better job at supporting each other so let me bring this politics that? now as well right it's also playing a very very huge role because you see a woman going for certain roles and then you see it's quite difficult and who are the voters women actually and they vote for the men in most cases let's not discuss politics <laughs> for the sake of somebody yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but normal let me come to you <laughs> well um is it to ask a question or no, just to make a comment i think we're actually wrapping up we ran out of time yeah I think uh, we've raised really salient uh, points concerning women and how important it is for us to see ourselves first as individuals who have strength and who have great potential and um, who have what it takes to be able to change whatever environment that they find themselves, whether it's in the professional or in the community as, it, as at large and um, how important synergy and um, being able to work together can be when we are able to leverage on each other's strengths. It makes it even for more accomplishments of whatever it is that we put our minds to. And I really like the fact that um, Maria has pointed out certain areas, the fact that the area of family and how important it is, orientation, because really the people that we become in our communities and in our societies, even the women that we see today were as a result of family orientation, where you have come to believe that you're nothing or you don't have a voice or you don't have anything significant to contribute. And it's time for us to begin to fight those um, those ideologies that have been passed on from one Absolutely. generation to the other. Another very key thing that I really like that we were able to point out is the fact is the area of mentorship. Mm. For a very long time, I didn't have uh, women that I could actually look up to and say that, oh, I would love to be like this person or I'd love to be like that. But across board, you can see men in business, you can see men in IT, in, in whatever fields and organizations that you see, there are people that you can actually look up to. So if women can begin to rise up to those uh, responsibilities of not just supporting other women, but being the ideal Absolutely. for what no, women no. should be, then I think that um, we would be able to overcome whatever challenges or, that we find in I'll the workspace. Or... Oh, wow. Okay. We need to run quickly. Okay. Um, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. And happy International Women's Day to you, beautiful ladies. Thank you. Both those in the studio and other ladies. Gender equity for Nigerian women leadership and business. We thank God for gender equity. Concerning Nigerian women leadership and business, they really stand out. If we have women contesting for offices in government, trust me, they will deliver. Also, I don't know they will have, I don't think they will have time to do what men do in government. That is rig their way through during elections. I am a man, but we men are a disgrace and embarrassment. Hmm. I didn't say that. Yes, sir. Women I know can deliver and turn things around if possible change Nigeria. Yeah, right. Your guess 
next to the exceptionally beautiful. My she name is, is Daniel oh, Inouye. Thank you, Daniel. Daniel. So we was thank asking you, about uh, this, but we ran out of time. But thank you so much, Maria. We hope to bring you back again. It's such a pleasure being here. Yeah, we thank have you. to talk about something else, but it's not today. <laughs> thank okay, you. that's fine. <laughs> thank you, Glory. Thank you, thank you Chinela. Thank you, thank you Now, before we go quickly, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles as Wish Your Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment. And more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. If you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Both men and women should feel free to be sensitive. Both men and women should feel free to be strong. It is time that we all perceive gender on a spectrum, not as two opposing sets of ideas. Emma Watson said that. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. So ladies night out, right? Yeah. So bring another great conversation to your screen. We might just have a politician amongst us tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>